Doug Stewart Show, and I am your boy, Doug Stewart. Thank you for joining me. Yes, yes, yes. How you doing? Yeah, how you doing? May 19th, 2014. And on this edition of the Doug Stewart Show, man, we're going to give you the funky four things that happened this past weekend in the world of sports. Uh, a lot of interesting stories. Some really sad stories as well. And we're going to get to that in a second. And make sure you're telling people about the show. And make sure you're passing the word. Uh, you can email me, Doug, at thedougstewartshow.com. You can also text me at 770-847-0536. And uh, truly, the uh, funnest show on the internet. We have a good time around here. And uh, getting to the topics that you want to talk about. But the four biggest stories from this past week, and I'm going to get into them. And I, it, it was actually about five or six different stories that I could have jumped into. But for the time's sake of the show and me keeping it short and sweet, I'm only going to hit four. And I call them the Funky Four. Um, kind of like a, a play on what we used to do on the Two Live Stews. So the four biggest stories in sports this past weekend, and not necessarily sports, I almost wanted to talk about uh, what happened with Jay- Jay-Z and Beyonce, but I'm not going to get into that, and Solange, uh, Beyonce's little sister in the elevator, just crazy, so I'm not going to really get into that, but the four biggest stories I believe are Steve Kerr, number four, and my four biggest stories, the funky four stories of the week, Steve Kerr getting the head coaching job for the Golden State Warriors, now this story is it's crazy in so many fronts. And the reason I say that is because Steve Kerr has never coached a minute of basketball. Now, he was a GM for the uh, Phoenix Suns for a point. Um, worked in front offices. Played 15 years in the NBA. Great college basketball player at Arizona. We know what he did. And this is really nothing new because, you know, Avery Johnson pretty much did the same thing. I think he only... Uh, was an assistant for one year, or actually, he was actually like uh, a mentee of uh, Don Nelson before he got his first head coaching job in the NBA. Mark Jackson, the guy that Steve Kerr is replacing, actually, you know, really didn't have any head coaching experience, even any assistant experience in the NBA, and he got the job, and that ended up being very, you know, a, a very good deal for everybody because they won 50 games this past year. It's just strange that Steve Kerr's name came from nowhere, basically because Phil Jackson mentioned he'd like for him, okay, to, you know, be the head coach of the Knicks. Now, and the reasons why is because Phil Jackson wants somebody to, you know, run a system, the the triangle, which he, you know, implemented when he was with the Chicago Bulls. So Steve Kerr is one of those guys. He's a disciple of Phil Jackson, supposedly. But it's just strange to see a guy come off the street. And this happens a lot with these analysts. Uh, the, the, the analyst job is kind of like the, the minor leagues for getting the NBA coaching job. He gets five years and $25 million. Now, God bless Steve Kerr, but Steve Kerr, we don't know if he can coach his way out of a paper bag. I, I, just, I just really feel like that is very interesting. I, and, and it might work. It might work. The real problem I guess I have with this is Mark Jackson was a great coach. You, you could tell by Mark Jackson's demeanor that he was a fantastic coach. The players responded to him. They won 50 games, as I mentioned earlier, made it to the playoffs, and without some bad breaks, maybe you know a non-injury to Andrew Bogut at center. The Golden State Warriors are still in this thing. So they have a great young team. Uh, Steve Kerr, I'm sure, will do great things. I just think it's a big risk because he might suck. I mean, Steve Kerr might suck. You don't know. Mark Jackson evidently rubbed some of the wrong people uh, the wrong way. Uh, Really brought a lot of religion into the locker room. A lot of people didn't like that, supposedly. You hear all of these things, but you really don't know the real story. It's just, uh, I think you're really taking a big risk bringing in a guy like Steve Kerr that has no experience, but getting rid of a guy that has shown that he can get the job done. That's my problem with it. No, no real problem with bringing in somebody that doesn't have experience because obviously this works in the NBA. But you're getting rid of somebody that's tried and true and proven and won 50 games. That's like the most games that the Golden State Warriors had won in one year and for like ever. So that, that's a real risky move. Funky four, number four. Or number three, actually. Donald Sterling, his comments about Magic Johnson. And basically, 
What I want to focus on are what Donald Sterling said this week, the idiotic comments that he made this week is him saying that what has Magic Johnson really done for the community? Huh? Magic Johnson? You might, there might not be anybody else in the world that's done more for the community. And when you're talking about communities, talking about the urban community, the black community, um, there, there might not be that many other people in the world that have done more things, more good in the hood than Magic Johnson. Uh, Magic Johnson has put up many businesses in the neighborhoods, uh, theaters, you know, the Magic Johnson theaters, restaurants, fitness centers, sports teams, a, net, a, t a TV network. So this guy's done a lot. His empire is estimated to be about $500 million, okay? Magic Johnson has done a ton of things. He's given away about $20 million for charity, as estimated, as well as $4 million in scholarships, and which makes me believe that this Donald Sterling guy might not be all the way there, even more than we know that he's not there. It's almost like some senility is, 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 uh, is setting in. We already know that he's actually got cancer, um, and that's, that's obviously not a good thing. So the big thing about Donald Sterling is he's like he's out of touch. It's like he has no clue that the, the things that he said about Magic Johnson and, and black people in general to, to V. Stiviano were so offensive and so, so insulting and demeaning. It's almost like that he looks at black people as not, you know, not human. And you, you just can't do that, especially in a league like the NBA where plenty of people have talked about it. 80% uh, of its players are black. You just can't do that. And these final comments about Magic Johnson, I think they are going to be the final comments because he's done. And he's suing the NBA. He's suing the league, uh, saying that it's not right the way they're trying to get rid of him. They can't take his team. Yeah, I hear you, man. But you got to lose this. You're going to lose this, man. And I, I, I wish that maybe his kids or a family member or somebody would just say, man, just stop. Just stop. I mean, you caught red-handed. The gig is up. Give it up. You're going to make five, six, seven, eight hundred million dollars. You put down 12. Just walk away, bruh. Just walk away. Oh, oh boy, that, that story is more bizarre the more that, that, that comes out. Funky Four, topic number two this week um, in the world of sports is Aaron Hernandez. Have you heard this? The former New England Patriot player. Hernandez was charged Thursday with fatally shooting two Cape Verdean immigrants in July 2012, one week before the star tight end reported to training camp. Yeah, you, you know Aaron Hernandez is already on trial for murdering one of his friends, okay? Now we find out that some murders that were unsolved from 2012, what they had been talking about for a while, that he could be a suspect because he was in the area and they kind of put this thing together that, you know, he might have done this. They, they filed charges. They're saying Aaron Hernandez, a tight end, the guy just got a huge contract. They say he rolled up on these two guys after a dispute at a nightclub, rolled up on these two guys at a stoplight, boys in the hood style, and shot them to death at the stoplight sitting in their car. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? I mean, this is so unbelievable that a guy that has so much Okay, has so much to live for and, and, and is blessed by God so, so much, would do something like this. Now, once again, it's alleged and he's denying it. And we've seen stranger things happen. But right now, it doesn't look good for the home team. And I said this when it first came out is, I'm shocked. I never thought in my lifetime that a pro athlete would bypass Ray Carruth in doing a, a, a dastardly deed like this, murder. Okay, and both of them are horrible, and I really hate to trivialize it and, and compare one to the other, but Ray Carruth's crime, he paid somebody to do it. Ray Carruth, Carruth didn't even do it. He was kind of like the mastermind in, in the killing of his girlfriend his, uh, and his uh, unborn child. The child actually lived, but he paid somebody, a, a murder for hire type thing, okay? And there's reasoning behind this. He felt like, you know, you let some people tell you, he felt like, you know, he was being taken advantage of and he was going to do something about it. So that's horrible in itself. But 
Aaron Hernandez allegedly has killed three people because they disrespected him? Are you kidding me? And that's what it all boils down to. It's almost like back in the day when somebody stepped through your sneakers in the store, in, 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 the, uh, in the club, or stepped through your shoes, and, 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 some, and gunfight, uh, a gunfight occurred after that. It's incredible how unbelievable this story is. Uh, once again, if this is true, I mean, he goes down as the all-time greatest dummy. I mean, dummy. I mean, really, dummy is isn't enough to call this guy Aaron Hernandez if this is true we will see in the number one story this week in the funky four biggest stories uh, in the world of sports and you are watching the Doug Stewart show is my man Johnny Manziel yeah it just came out that Johnny Manziel during the draft after he was slipping actually sent a text to the Browns saying listen I wish you guys would come and get me. Hurry up and draft me because I want to be there. I want to wreck this league together. Are you kidding? The, the Johnny Manziel legend grows even more. And I said it before. I believe in this kid. For some reason, I think this kid has that moxie. I think he has that winner's edge. Athletically, he's there. The only thing you can knock him for is his size. Huh? Guess what? I think the Dallas Cowboys, I think a lot of teams are going to regret this. And now, could be wrong. You know, we don't know. We don't know what these guys are going to turn out to be. Time will tell. I just got a feeling about Johnny Manziel. I hope this doesn't come back to bite me. I hope he doesn't suck. <laughs> you know, I hope he's not like Ryan Leaf or somebody like that. I don't think so. I think this kid's a winner. Now, the Browns have to put a team around him. But you talk about moxie and confidence and swag. Johnny Manziel got that. I think the Browns are off to a good start, man. I think they are. I think that's a great pick for the Cleveland Browns. They've been bad for so long. They needed a guy like this to inject them with some, with some confidence and some, some moxie and, and all of that stuff I just talked about. All right? What are your thoughts on this week's Funky Four? The four biggest stories in the world of sports. Steve Kerr going to the Golden State Warriors. Sterling talking about Magic Johnson even more. Hernandez allegedly killing two more people. And Johnny Manziel say, come get me. Yeah. You can email your boy Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. And once again, you can text me at 770-847-0536. Tell people about the show. Like the show. Share it. Retweet. And the big thing is to subscribe to the show. Hit the button right down there to subscribe. We're going to be at 2,000 followers very soon. All right? Pass the word to your boys your folks, your peoples, and everybody. This is the Doug Stewart Show.